The catalyst that brought about the Eldari race's fall came from the very depths of their collective psyche, the innate need to fuel their passions and indulge in every extreme. Their people had long outgrown the need for labour or manual agriculture. Society provided all that was required without individual effort, leaving long centuries for the Eldari to spend sating their every desire. Fueled by an inexhaustible curiosity, many gave way to their most hedonistic impulses. Exotic cults sprang up across the Eldari domains that eclipsed the noble pursuits of old, each dedicated to esoteric knowledge or sensual excess. The core of the Eldari race began to look inwards, inexorably seeking new ways to explore the full range of emotion and sensation. Such behaviour was perilously decadent and in the end corrosive to the soul of the race. The pursuit of excess gradually became a blight upon the whole society. The acts of the pleasure cults began to transcend those of idle curiosity or even extreme addiction. Ildari from every corner of the empire wallowed in their most unnatural impulses in the pursuit of debauchery. As the cults gained a tighter hold over their society, the Ildari became increasingly divided. Those who saw the foulness that corrupted their people for what it was became known as Exodites, and they departed to found colony worlds on the fringes of the Eldari Empire. As the civilization slid further into anarchy, others repented of their ways and fled into deep space aboard world ships called craft worlds. Most Eldari, however, continued to glut themselves on the pursuits of the depraved. Altansar was one of the many craft worlds, large and small, that survived the fall. It rode out the initial psychic shockwaves that destroyed the Eldari realms but was subsequently caught in the gravity well of the Eye of Terror. Although the Asuriani of Altansar fought valiantly against the encroachment of chaos, they were unable to escape their inevitable doom. Within five hundred years of the fall, their craft world was swallowed whole into the warp. The only soul that escaped the clutches of this roiling warp storm was the Phoenix Lord known as Malgan Ra, the Harvester of Souls, the most accomplished of Altansar's exarchus and founder of the Aspect of Dark Reapers. When Asaman taught his brethren the arts of war, it was Morgan Ra that fell furthest from the fold. He fashioned baroque weapons of occult nature, not for him the shining blades of his brethren, but instead dark and malefic artifacts that could slay his foes from afar. As his craft progressed, Morgan Ra learnt that even the most outlandish of weapons could be used with the precision of a scalpel. This discovery and his mastery of each of the diverse facets of ranged combat is behind the disciplines of the Dark Reaper aspect, as well as the creation of the Malgatar. This scythe-like weapon built into a shrieker pattern, shuriken cannon fires mind-linked discs large enough to decapitate a swathe of foes before vanishing into nothingness, and the curved blade it sports is worthy of its grim reputation. Ten thousand years after the Eye of Terror swallowed Morgan Ra's homeworld, that nightmarish realm vomited the legions of chaos into the material universe, leaving a gaping lesion in space where real space and the warp could coexist. Whilst the rift was still open and the armies of that hell plane were spewing forth, Morgan Ra took his chance. He plunged into the unreality of the warp and searched its malignant reaches for what was left of his lost people. Over the course of many adventures, as told in the macabre Basfinciali Lays, Morgan Ra eventually found the remains of his craft world. The Eldari of Altansar lived on still, after a fashion. Morgan Ra guided what was left of his craft world out of the Eye of Terror and led them against the forces of chaos to deny them their victory. However, at the war councils that followed Altansar's return, there was no welcome from the other craft world's autarchs for their long-lost kin. Though the Phoenix Lord's people certainly fought hard, they were secretive and unsettling, and spoke only in whispers. Of the Asuriani of Altansar, the same question continues to be asked, though never in Malgan Ra's presence. How could any living Eldari remain untouched by the predations of the Eye of Terror for so many millennia? Because of his people's suffering, none harbour such a strong abhorrence for chaos as does Malgan Ra. But where Fuegan's rage burns hot, the harvester of souls is as cold as the grave. Thank you so much for watching. 
If you are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. It really does make a difference. We continue. In all things, the Dark Reapers take their learnings from the Phoenix Lord Morgan Ra, the most grim and foreboding of all Asuriani. Morgan Ra teaches that the kiss of death can be delivered from afar with grace and ruthless efficiency. It is this credo that is central to the way of the Reaper. The Dark Reapers are the most menacing of the warrior aspects. Their skull-helmed visage is a spine-chilling sight in itself, but to the Eldari it has a symbolism altogether darker than simple death. The Dark Reapers exemplify the war god as destroyer, and their formidable war suits echo that of their founder, the Harvester of Souls. The battle armor of these ominous aspect warriors is the color of midnight and cold to the touch. It incorporates a complex set of interlocking plates that provide formidable protection and an impressively stable platform from which to fire their heavy weaponry. This combination of durability and stability makes Dark Reapers relatively slow to attack when compared to the aspect warriors of other shrines, though it matters little, for their role on the battlefield has ever been one of long-ranged fire support. The sacred weapon of the Dark Reaper is the Reaper Launcher, this long-barreled weapon can create a blistering firestorm with but a single salvo of Star Swarm missiles. This is not the clumsy bombardment of other races, however, but a pinpoint volley aimed for the heart. Alternatively, Reaper launchers can fire armor-piercing Starshot missiles, which have the punch to smash through the battleplate of the Traitor Legions, tear apart Tyranid carapaces, and even wreck light vehicles. Only the most heavily armored of foes can hope to escape. The Dark Reapers pride themselves on their precision, and much of their training within the Aspect Shrine is devoted to the challenge of attaining the perfect shot. During their punishing battle rites, a Dark Reaper is expected to display incredible feats of coordination, focus and balance. Their obsessive, unflinching nature resonates strongly with the image of the Dark Reapers as formidable, stoic warriors whose baleful gaze haunts the battlefield from afar. The already sublime skills of the Dark Reapers are further increased by powered limb supports within their armor that absorb the recoil of the Reaper launcher. Advanced sensor vanes mounted upon the sides of their helmets lock onto a fast-moving target, making their volleys all but impossible to evade. For especially complex shots, a Reaper can utilize an elaborate mind link that enables him to see from the muzzle of his weapon giving rise to the adage that death blooms wherever a reaper's gaze falls. Dark Reaper exarchs are masters of their aspect, crack shots who have spent the equivalent of many human lifetimes perfecting their marksmanship. Following in Morgan Ra's footsteps, many have mastered the use of a wide variety of long-ranged weapons, and should doing so provide a tactical advantage, will forego a reaper launcher in favor of a shuriken cannon, tempest launcher, or missile launcher. Regardless of their armament, entire wars have been known to go by without a Dark Reaper exarch missing a single shot. Should they fire wide, however, they will recall it well, for such mishaps must be atoned for once they return to their shrine. In theory, an Asuriani is capable of compartmentalizing and controlling their warrior selves, casting aside their blood-hungry persona just as they would their war gear. When, as Aspect Warrior loses this ability to disassociate from their killer self, they become an Exarch, High Priests of Cain. Exarchs are the keepers of the bloody-handed God's shrines and the teachers of his creed, and their abilities are far more developed than even the finely honed Aspect Warriors whom they lead to battle. Their lives are utterly dedicated to their Aspect's particular way of war, and the teaching, training and ceremony that go with it. Upon initiation, an Exarch will don an elaborate version of Aspect Warrior armor, studded with waystones that contain the souls of their shrine's previous Exarchs. The wearer will assume the sacred name associated with the armor, and his own spirit mingles with those of the departed. So empowered, the Exarch can draw upon the skill, wisdom and emotions of their predecessors, and any remaining sense of themselves as a distinct being is lost amidst the susurrus of the dead. It is a process that can never be reversed, and all who undergo it spend the rest of their days held in both fear and awe by their kin.